Hello, hello, and welcome to Penguins to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. I'm your host, Nick Berlansky, and today I want to just mention one thing to all you listeners out there. A goaltender changes everything. Two common phrases that you hear all the time around hockey. Goaltending can make or break a head coach in this league. A lot of the times when we see the Jack Adams Award, it goes to a a coach who just happens to have one of the better goaltenders in the league that is the stablemate of his success. The other phrase is to win in the playoffs, you need special teams and goaltending. It's why the New York Rangers beat the Pittsburgh Penguins last year, because they had a better power play, and at the end of the day, when it came down to crunch time, they had Igor Shosturkin. But the Pittsburgh Penguins proved it once again last night that what you need to win And what changes the complexity of the game is having a good goaltender. Shout out to Casey DeSmith, man. We have all been on Casey DeSmith all season long. I dubbed him Coin Flip Casey, and I still think that's the perfect moniker for the guy. He just happened to show up on the right side of the coin from puck drop last night. And boy, did the Pittsburgh Penguins need it. They were outplayed severely in the first 35 to 40 minutes of that game. And it carried over into the third period a little bit as well. But one guy stood on his head, kept them in the game and gave them a chance. And is the, I won't say the lone reason, but is the main reason, the primary reason the Pittsburgh Penguins had a two point party on fifth Avenue. Shout out to Josh gets of the Penguins radio network. Casey DeSmith's performance last night, by the numbers, 41 saves on 42 shots, 2.28 goals saved above expected, 28 saves on 29 shots through the first two periods of play, and the Penguins only trailed one to nothing after all of that. The only goal that he allowed was at four on four with a lot of space to Nathan McKinnon. Meanwhile, oh boy, Jeff Carter was boxing out like he was trying to open up a lane for LeBron James to beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record. We'll have to eventually continue the conversation and discuss it, discussion surrounding Jeff Carter, what he was doing on that play, and what he does for this team. But that was the lone blemish on Casey to Smith's evening last night go into overtime three massive saves on the penalty kill in overtime to keep the penguins in it and to directly lead to the chris letang goal that gets them that all-important second point that has eluded them four times out of the last 10 games an impressive showing by casey to smith a goaltending changes everything. His consistency to me is still a worry, and we'll get to that in a minute. But what he was able to do last night, hold down the fort while the rest of the team pulls their crap together because they didn't have it coming out. Chris Letang said postgame that sometimes the first game back from break is not pretty. And this one was no exception. The Pittsburgh Penguins did not show up in the first period, and the defending cup champions did show up, but luckily, number one was there. I know what everybody's going to say. Hey, you've been bashing him pretty bad for the, the better part of 2023 to this point. He's deserved it. He has. And I'm not saying one game absolves him of everything, but this shows us that he has it in him. He has it in him to be the guy that the Penguins saw 
late last season. He has it him to be the guy that we saw in game one against the New York Rangers. And all he has to do last night, a little above and beyond the call of duty and what it should be. But all he has to do is give the best players on the Penguins a chance to make a difference in the game. And nine times out of ten, they're going to do it. From the point that there was six minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the game. I went back and I rewatched that. I suggest if you have ESPN Plus and you can, I would go back and watch it if I were you. Watch the way the top two lines take over. I'll even give credit to Kasperi Kapanen. He made a couple of very nice plays in that stretch. And we'll talk more about Kapanen, Carter, who I've mentioned both of them. We'll talk about more about those guys tomorrow on Tip of the Iceberg. But from the 6 minute and 19 second remaining mark, Evgeny Malkin's line broke through in a big way. Everybody is going to point out, you know, Evgeny Malkin's effort in overtime, diving for that loose puck over Pavo Frensos, leading to the opportunity, despite taking a penalty that put them shorthanded in overtime. But you look at the way that his line was operating. And I'm so happy that Mike Sullivan chose, coming out of break, to put that line back together, to put Russ down there with Zucker and Malkin, because that has been the Penguins' statistically best line when it comes to puck possession and scoring opportunities. They demand the puck when they're on the ice, and they did it late in that game. It breaks through. It's not the prettiest goal. It hits off of Francois, bounces off of Brian Russ, but the one thing I want to mention is not only on that shift where they scored, but the shift that starts at 619 remaining. I've said it three or four times, so you can bookmark it. Watch that shift by the first or the second line on the Penguins. Sometimes could be a first line on some teams. The second line for the Penguins. The way that they're able to support the puck carrier. The way that they're able to forecheck with both Rust and and with Zucker. The way that they just cycle the puck and all converge on the net. That's something that you would think is pretty obvious. Down one late in the game, where do you go to score goals? The front of the net. But they do it in a way that, hey, we'll get the puck to the net. The three of us will get there. And we'll all be in position to, no matter what direction that puck goes, we're going to try to have it covered in each and every one. And that line did it. And that's something that you can afford to have happen when your goaltender keeps you in the game. Because to be honest, considering the way that most of the team played last night, they shouldn't have been in the game with five minutes to go in the third period. It should have been probably three or four to nothing. Maybe three or four to one. But Casey DeSmith stood on his head. Like I said, the consistency is still a worry. But we're starting to see him put better performances back to back to back. Now, I know this is the first game back off of a long break, but that's a good performance. What did we see in the Capitals game right before break? A good performance. What did we see against San Jose? Very bad defense. Very bad defense. Now, Would you have liked to save or two from DeSmith? Yes. Very bad defense. So I would venture to guess that the last three games, you've seen a version of Casey DeSmith, not that they can win with on an extended period of time, but that they can stay afloat with. They can stay competitive with, especially going on this California road trip where you're not sure whether or not Tristan Jari is going to be back yet. I understand last night was the absolute apex of what we can expect from Casey DeSmith. And it's asinine to think he's going to give that effort night in and night out. But if he could just do some of that, more of that than the other side of the coin, then the Pittsburgh Penguins might be able to stay afloat here. Then the Pittsburgh Penguins might be able to hold the dam until the reinforcements come. It's on Ron Hextall to find out who those reinforcements are and to get them to this team. But for the first time in a while, I'm starting to get some confidence in the Penguins goaltending situation. Getting Tristan Jari back will put this team in a much better standing as a whole. You see what a goaltender can do in that game alone last night? 
He's still day-to-day with an upper body injury. Skated both days since the Penguins returned from pre- from the uh, break. The next step's going to be to have him rejoin practice. Hopefully it happens on this road trip as the Penguins ended up taking today off so they could head out to California. I'm not saying Casey DeSmith can lead this team into the playoffs. I'm not saying Casey DeSmith can put this team over the top over teams like the Islanders, teams like the Panthers, teams like the Sabres, teams like the Capitals, all four of which are fighting for those two spots with the Penguins. But I am saying I have more confidence now than I did a couple weeks ago that if the Penguins can get Tristan Jari back, they can stay afloat until the reinforcements come. And if the Penguins get Tristan Jari back soon, I'm pretty confident they're a playoff team. Now, they're not going anywhere unless they get those reinforcements. They might not even make the playoffs unless they get those reinforcements. But with Tristan Jari back and with the way that this top six is playing, it's going to be hard to deny the Pittsburgh Penguins a 17th straight playoff appearance. Like I started this out saying, a goaltender changes everything. Not only for this team, but for any team in the National Hockey League. That's going to do it for this episode of Penguins to Go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. The Tip of the Iceberg feed and Penguins to Go should be right there along with you. So make sure you like, subscribe, you leave a review, leave a comment, whatever it takes. That helps us out as we like to help you out with your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. That's going to do it for this one. Have a great day, Pens fans. 